Activity-based costing. Topic two, ABC implementation. An ABC system, while more complex than other cost allocation systems, can be described in a simple seven-step approach. Now, I just want to note here that I will never ask you uh, to memorize the steps, meaning I won't be like, what's step four of this system? What's step five of this system? But rather, I want to provide you this seven-step approach so that we can start to you know, frame how we're going to separate, identify, allocate, solve, and communicate uh, the items here. So we're going to use this, uh, talk about it briefly, and then do a comprehensive example. So the first step is to identify the cost objects. So what products do we want to be costed? What services? What process? We got to identify our cost object. Number two, Identify the direct costs of the products, the direct materials, the direct labor. Number three, select the activities and allocation basis for allocating indirect costs to the products. So step number three can be really time consuming as it requires breaking down the operations of creating a product into activities that are mutually exclusive, i.e. no overlap and then determining what the best cost driver for each of those is. Uh, a few years ago, I was in Calgary and uh, one of my colleagues uh, was about to teach the core two, the CPA core two workshop for the first time. And she asked if I wouldn't mind uh, training her. So she, a little bit of backup, she had shadowed me. Uh, so I was evaluating her uh, before she came, became a session leader. And then afterwards, uh, we stayed in touch and she asked if we could kind of prep together since I had done the workshop a few times before. And absolutely, so we sat in Tim Hortons and we got coffee and donuts and it was lovely. Uh, and one of the activities in the Core 2 workshop a few years ago was a very comprehensive morning activity of mapping out processes regarding, um, this was like the testing and uh, evaluation of, um, of a new product. Uh, and they had new products, they had specialized products, and then every product kind of went through the design, uh, the building, and then the testing processes. So we had a couple different products, a couple different processes, and everything required a map. I bring this up because what was really neat is because while a number of us are like, I'm never going to work in manufacturing, how is this going to come into play? Um, this can be used for services, and this can also be used for processes within a company. So to back it up, um, she was like, oh, I've actually done this before. And to kind of demonstrate how step number three can be so time consuming, when she was at Nexon in the financial reporting department, they actually did this for the entire finance department. So they had the leads for each uh, each uh, group come in and they booked off a boardroom for a week and they spent the entire week just doing step three so that you can see, you know, soup to nuts. Okay, if, uh, if um, <laughs> uh, an invoice comes in, you know, where does it go? How does it get open? How does it get processed? When does it get audited? Cool. Okay, they just mapped out the invoicing process. Um, billing, they, in, uh, they mapped out the entire billing process like they just went through every single one of the finance functions uh, to get an idea of what exactly each process and each activity costs the company all right let's move on then we have step number four identify the indirect costs associated with each cost allocation base number five is then computing the rate per unit for each of the cost allocation base six Compute the indirect costs to assign to the product cost object. And number seven, compute the total cost act activity by adding up the direct costs. So your direct materials, direct labor, and your indirect costs allocated to the products. Before we jump into a comprehensive example, I want to point out one thing. Uh, that this ABC approach, this is non-GAAP. So this is not IFRS compliant. This is not ASPE compliant. This is meant for internal use for the company to understand the costs, understand what are you incurring, um, what, and essentially doing, this would lead to uh, a cost benefit analysis because if you're not getting more benefit from something, including a process or activity, uh, then it is costing you. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? 
maybe it is better to, if it works within your uh, product uh, strategy, if you have a really low cost <laughs> item, maybe you just deal with product returns instead of doing comprehensive testing before shipping up products. You know, maybe you accept that risk and just scrap the whole testing portion. I don't know. Um, it sounds a little bit controversial, but I really just want to say that more is not more and understanding our costs uh, and understanding the inputs in that leads decision makers to make best uh, decisions kind of going out and to make sure that your company is in alignment strategy from from top to bottom. OK, let's look at that example. At Acme Corporation, uh, they've implemented an ABC system and it's costing a job for a customer. Hmm, job costing. Uh, Acme produces specialized work boots that are highly heat resistant for individuals that work in metal foundries. The order is for 100 sets of boots. The order will require 50 kilograms of raw material at a price of $19 per kilogram. The order will also require 150 hours of labor to manufacture at $17 per hour. With Acme's ABC system, they have identified two activities to assign indirect costs to, machine setups and machine operations. The company has budgeted $400,000 in indirect costs for machine setup and expects to perform 8,000 machine setups this year. The company has further budgeted $800,000 in indirect costs for machine operations and expects to perform 22,000 machine operations this year. That special order requires five machine setups and 20 machine operations. How much costs should be allocated in total to this order? By the way, as an aside, I want to share that the reason why I read a slide that has um, a chunk of words on it, it's because um, best practices in presentations uh, are to, whenever you have a, a solid chunk of text, you actually are supposed to read it. Same thing with a full quote, um, and that is because it is very overwhelming for individuals to visually see a huge blob of text. Um, so, and then the text competes with the presenter. So anyways, anytime I have a comprehensive example, a question with multiple choice answers, um, I will read the text just to give you a little bit of an insight as to why the heck I'm doing this. All right, I am going to switch to Excel and we're gonna solve this together. All right, step number one, identify the cost objects, product processes, um, services to be costed. So for step number one here, step one, uh, this is relatively simple. It's told us in the question and the cost object um, is, uh, cost object are the boots for the special order. All right, let's move these over just a tad bit in our screen and move on to step Number two, identify all the direct costs uh, of the products. So all the direct materials and direct labor. So here we had direct materials and that is equal to 50 kilograms times $19 per kilograms or $950. And then this special order has direct labor of 150 hours times by rate of $17 per hour. So $2,550. Okay, I'm just gonna skim my way through. That's it for direct material and direct labor. Okay, now moving on to step number three, where I select the activities and allocation basis for allocating indirect costs to the product. Remember, I said that this one would be the most time consuming. And that is in practice. In practice, you aren't given a nice little summary with everything. Here, somebody has done the hard work for you and they have gone through and they have said that the machine setups is the best way to allocate um, indirect costs related to, um, and that we have uh, machine setups of 8,000 this year and machine operations of 22,000 this year. So then we are given uh, the amount of machine setups and uh, machine operations that this job will occur. So I'm going to note this down here and then this will come up a little bit later to see which, acti uh, which item is associated with each base. So 
knowing that this company has machine setups in total of 8,000 and it has machine operations in total of 22,000 of this year. Okay, so now we go on to step number four. And step number four is identifying the indirect costs associated with each cost allocation base. So for our machine setups, I'll just copy this down. Our machine setups, we are told that we have 400,000 in machine setups and we have 800,000 in total for machine operations. So I'm gonna put that right down here. Okay, and now step number five. Step number five is asking us to compute, compute the rate per unit for each of the cost allocation base. So we have cost allocation base one and cost allocation base two. And so we will just copy down. And what we want to do here is figure out what is the rate per unit for each cost allocation base. So we have 400,000 dollars in costs divided by 8,000 machine setups, and we have a total cost of $50 per machine setup. Similarly, we have 800,000 in machine operation costs, and we have 22,000 unique machine operations. And we have a total of 36, 37, 36, 33, and we will just put that here and do some rounding. All right, so now step number six. Step number six requires us to compute the indirect cost to assign to this product slash cost object. So this special order, these boots special order. So we need to take our item here and see, okay, how much, how many machine setups does this require? How many machine operations does this require? And we are told that we require five machine setups. So we're going to allocate five times 50 and we are going to require 20 machine operations. So 20 times 36, 36 and change. And then we get our item here of seven, two, seven, two, seven, and two, fifty. And we'll round this down now that we are in the final stages and deal with some whole dollars. All right, so now we are looking for step number seven. And should I put it here? You know, step seven, this is basically total. What the heck does this entire job cost? And so to do that, we take our direct materials, add in our direct labor, add in our two um, indirect costs allocated by separate pools, and we get a total for this special order of $4,477. And this addresses our question. So how much cost should be allocated in total to the order? 4,477. All right, let's go back to the slides. All right, now that you've done a comprehensive example with me, how about you do one on your own, either with or without the steps provided? Time for a question. You are designing a new ABC system for a client that operates a law firm. You've noted the most significant activities related to indirect costs are client onboarding and legal research. You have allocated $500,000 to client onboarding and $12 million to legal research. Upon inquiring with the firm's managing partner, she indicates that she expects the firm will onboard 100 new clients this year and perform 240,000 hours of legal research. Which activity rates should be assigned to these activities respectively? Is it A, $50,000 and $2.08? B, $5,000 and $50? C, $5,000 and $5,208, or D, costs shouldn't be allocated to legal research. What do you think? If you said B, $5,000 and $50 respectively, you are correct. The cost for client onboarding is $500,000, and 100 clients are expected to be onboarded, 
Therefore, that gives us 500,000 divided by 100 or $5,000. While the cost pool for legal research is 12 million and 240,000 hours are expected, 12 million divided by 240,000 equals $50. All right, nice work. I will see you in the next video.